Welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining. Nice, easy, full stroke front crawl warm up just to get going. If you haven't done anything so far, it doesn't matter. Just going to go a little bit of a, a loosener. Get your cords set up. Just work the technique a little bit before we start the hard work. Um, if you've got some light dumbbells available, they'll be helpful. We did build this as strength today. Um, there's going to be some cord work and then we're going to drop the cords and switch over to some nice kind of not, not really drills, but just different ways of working the arms, working the shoulders, making them a little bit stronger, taking that fatigue into the full stroke trying our best to work on our technique while we're tired. That's, if, if nothing else today, that's gonna to be great for your racing. As the fatigue kicks in, your technique stays accurate. That's gotta be good, that's gotta be good. So, set things up nicely. Think about the catch position. I was watching my video back. I noticed one arm was sort of not pivoting quite as early out of the elbow as I'd have liked. You know, you can uh, double check these. If you can see yourself on your screens, share the screen or some sort of computer wizardry, whatever you've got going on, you can have a look at your technique. Keep it simple. I'm just pulling down the center line. Good, got about another 30 seconds before we start. Um, this 30-ish minute main set, okay? And the pattern's gonna be, we're gonna do some backstroke. If you've never done backstroke before, don't panic. It's quite easy on dry land. Then we're going to do some slow front crawl with a surface recovery. And then we're going to come back to varying amounts of time on the court. So it's backstroke, slow front crawl. And I'm going to take you through all of those. Okay. So we've got one minute backstroke coming up. I'm going to add some light dumbbells just because I like the fact that it gives me a sense of that feel and hold on the water, even though obviously I'm not and it can be useful, okay? Are we good, are we warm? If not, just go slowly with these. All right, I'm gonna start the clock now. I've got the timer, I'm gonna do all the timing. You just need to follow along, okay? Lightweight to start with, backstroke. Arm comes up close to the ear. The shoulders are switching from side to side. I'm pivoting at the elbow after that brush of the ear. I'm entering with the little finger. The hips are following the upper body. The shoulders are switching from side to side, just like I would on my full stroke front crawl. The two strokes are very similar, very similar. So just keep it going. We've got about 20 seconds to go. Catch and send that water down. Catch and send the water down towards the hip. Use the forearm just like you would on front crawl but in that reverse direction. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. We're then gonna flip it, we're gonna reverse it. We're gonna go keep the weights in your hands. We're gonna work on a very slow, full stroke front crawl with a surface recovery. I quite like to put a little bit of a bend into the body so I can actually see, I can actually see what the elbows are doing. If you wanna stand upright, that's no problem. Okay, you can still do this, but we are looking for some surface recovery this time. Okay, just full stroke front crawl, work the shoulders, work the back. And then before you know it, we're back on the long cords for our full stroke front crawl, but obviously with the submerged, only the submerged movements. Last 20 seconds, swimmers, last 20 seconds. So surface recovery, keep it narrow, whether you are straight arm, high elbow, your choice. What happens underwater is really key. Last 10 seconds. Catch, pull with the palm and the forearm. In three, two, one, fantastic. Back on the cords, back on the cords. Here we go. Two minutes with the cords, two minutes with the cords before we go back to our backstroke, our slow front crawl. So it's three different movements, blocks of three different movements, and we're gonna Mix up the times just to keep you on your toes. 
looking to take those tired shoulders from that backstroke and that slow front crawl into your full stroke. So remember, early pivot from the elbow, trying to create that horizontal forearm position nice and early so that pushes all the way through. Don't get lazy, don't exit above the hips, push beyond, reach for the knees, reach for the knees. If you can possibly open the hands, you can pay, think about your finger spacing as well. I guess if the paddles or the, um, or the, the, the grips that I've got, if it's just not conducive to that, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. We've got the arm movements, we've got the trajectory of the hands pulling under the body, we've got the shoulders switching, we've got the breathing happening. There's enough to be going on without adding that slight complication. I think it was my left arm the other day that was just kind of falling, leading with the elbow a little bit. So I'm trying to just turn that over. There we go. And then set the catch position. I must work on that. It's good to be able to watch this, you know. Uh, the Endless Pool, fantastic concept. And they often come with not just an angled mirror, but a flat one on the bottom of the pool. It is a lot to observe and analyze but you can actually see the hands under the body in your reflection as you stay in one place. So a good advert for endless pools, not on commission, I promise you. There are other pools available by, that you can purchase. Five seconds, guys, five seconds. Three, two, one, back to the backstroke, back to the backstroke, here we go. Remember to set the catch, remember to set the catch, roll the shoulders, keeping the head still, head still. You'll often see backstrokers practicing with a cup or a bottle on their head. It is so critical for fast swimming to keep the head still. And I think it's interesting that, that, you know, in the clinical environment that is the pool, where the lane ropes guide you, the black line guide you, everything keeps you, you know, the swimmers are that, um, you know, they're, they're that strict about minute details. We could really learn from that and take that into our open water where we only have our technique really keeping us from deviating. We, we use our technique to keep us straight. The alternative is excessive sighting, which is not great. Last eight seconds, five, four, three, two, good, and switch them, switch them. By all means, if you want to try a straight arm recovery, I have to be a bit careful on my narrow stairwell. We're still trying to catch under the water, keep the hands at 180. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that, so I'm gonna to switch to high elbow. Keep the hands at 180, and then that way it will flow into the cord work nicely. Keep the head still, pivot wide, keep the hand central, pivot wide, pulling with the forearm, might start to feel a little bit of a burn through the shoulders now. It's amazing, isn't it? Imagine doing an Ironman, you're going to be 4,000-ish repetitions of the back, lifting those arms up, recovering through. So a little bit of work to strengthen them wouldn't go amiss. You've also got your wetsuit on, which as thin as they are, as comfortable as they might be, there is still a layer of material surrounding the shoulder, and you need some strength to be able to pull through. There we go. There's a minute done. Back on the cords, guys. Back on the cords. Here we go. If you're warmed up, if you're feeling good, maybe take a step backwards, not far, not much distance. But just put a little bit of extra tension on. We are meant to be working some strength today. Switching the shoulders from side to side. Oh, I forgot to mention, we're up to four minutes now. Four minutes now on the cords. So it's always a minute on the back stroke, always a minute on the slow with the surface. And then these longer blocks on the cords, they're gonna jump around a little bit, okay? That's what's gonna add a little bit of variety here. If you missed Monday, you can catch up. It's up, been uploaded onto YouTube. If you can share the details with your friends, it'd be great to see some more people joining us. And I think I've mentioned before that even when uh, the lockdown and all the other issues finish, I was thinking of continuing this so that people can you know, join us from further afield. People can do an extra session without the faff and fuss of going to the pool. And again, this won't replace your swim training 
but it will supplement, it will supplement, okay? So all useful stuff. I mean, I, I, in my lectures, I, I talk about, you know, trying to get to the pool three or four times a week if you really want to make some progress. You know, once, two sessions a week, you're gonna struggle to move forwards. Three, two to three, you might plateau, make a few breakthroughs. Three to four is not easy, but it is kind of what's needed to keep progressing, keep moving forwards. So with that in mind, we might just add this to the website. You can book up. We'll do it three or four times a week from anywhere in the world. That would be amazing. Halfway through, halfway through. Two minutes down, two minutes to go. Okay, let's add a little breathing. If you've joined me before on this, remember, we don't have to sort of switch the breathing continuously every third stroke. You know, that is the clinical definition of bilateral breathing if you're looking in the textbooks. But we can go to the right one, to the right two, to the right three, and then sort of take our three strokes to switch over to the left for two, for three, and then we bring it back. So we're getting the benefits of breaking up the bad habits, but we're not getting out of breath as if we were sort of holding it for one, for two, for three, one and two and three. So it's a nice way to just mellow that out a little bit. Okay, something to try, maybe something to try. Keeping the head still, keeping the hands pulling down the center line popping the elbow out wide, those are the key factors. What you don't want is to sort of get lazy, get tired and lean on that straight arm to help support the breathing, okay? That's a dreadful situation where you'll be bounced along, you'll be going up for air, but it will not in any way help take you forwards. Okay, 30 seconds to go, 30 seconds to go. Don't lose focus, keep pushing through, reach for the knees. Remember the hips are following the movement of the shoulders. You can stay central with the hand for a little, a little bit longer than you might imagine. Don't sort of keep the hips flat and sweep around. That's not going to help. Last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Fantastic. Let's go. Let's go back onto the backstroke, please. Back onto the backstroke. Actually, I'm going to pick up a different weight now just to mix this up a little bit. Keep the accuracy. Set the catch. Push the water towards the feet with the forearm and the hand. We do not swim backstroke with a straight arm, contrary to what you might see in various public pools. I'm a bit narrowed here because of the stairwell. Okay, but you want, just like front crawl, where we'd stay narrow and sort of keep this alignment under. Okay, I'm on my back, the little finger enters, and I'm staying narrow. Don't want that straight arm nudging me from one side and then pushing me across the other side where I just literally sweep through. That's good work, everyone, good. Head still. Nice and narrow, shoulders rotating from side to side. The two strokes complement each other so nicely. In three, two, one, and let's spin it forwards for full stroke front crawl with a surface recovery. Spin it forwards, keep the hands at 180 to each other. Nice and slow, nice and slow, nothing to be rushed here. We're using the slow movements to get the burn through the back, through the shoulders, work on the technique. I'm going with high elbow. You might be able with a straight arm, but whatever you choose, keep it narrow. Keep it narrow. Don't be low wide and throw the arm around like a butterfly movement. That's gonna need the arms to, the, the legs to sweep and swing and keep you balanced. Stay narrow, keep the head still. Let's just focus on the arms and the back here. Don't worry about the breathing. We can do that with the cords. Last 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Good work. 10. Five. Ready, back on the cords, back on the cords. Well done everyone, back on the cords. Here we go. Take a step back if you can. If not, stay where you are. If you're feeling a little bit fading, uh, fading a little bit, by all means, move forwards, take the pressure off. So, 
We're back down to two minutes. That's exciting. We're back down to two minutes for the chords. Okay, before we then hit our backstroke and our slow surface front crawl for the next round, okay? Things are gonna change up. Normally, if you work with me, you'll know I love a pattern. Today, we're gonna to just mix it and shake it up a little bit. So don't be jumping to conclusions as to what the next round might be. So two minutes, guys, two minutes. And we'll have nearly done. Well, we're about approaching 13 minutes of work so far, 13 minutes. And we are up to about 32 in total, 32 minutes in total. Hope you can stay with me for the full duration. If you can't, not the end of the world, you can catch up on YouTube. Just look for the emails I've been sending out or search for Swim for Try on the YouTube website and you'll find our channel and you'll see the last six weeks. We've got a nice catalog building up. You can work on your technical endurance. There's drills there. There's rehab and prehab exercises that we blended into the swimming. And then obviously Friday, we've got the big fitness session. And I've been thinking about what to do this week, this Friday. And I've got a real nice doozy of a session from the world of pool training that I'm going to modify slightly and bring into, bring into our court session. Last 10 seconds, last 10 seconds before we're back on the backstroke. In three, two, one, good job. Light dumbbells if you've got them, even a couple of tins. Doesn't matter just to give a little bit of a feel of hold on the water. Onto our backstroke, please. Switching shoulders from side to side. Enter with the little finger. As that shoulder falls down, pivot at the elbow so you can then keep it narrow close to the side and finish and push the water down towards the hips. If I know it might be a little while till we're back in the pools. But a great drill for practicing this is to literally pull yourself down the lane rope. So anchor, put your, move over to the lane rope, hold on to the lane rope, and then literally pull yourself through. And that will help you if you keep attached to the lane rope, it will actually sort of show you the, the, the way the shoulder and elbow we want to move. It's a great drill. It looks like when we do it at swim club, the kids are cheating and pulling themselves down the lane rope. They probably are a bit, but it actually is a nice way to learn how and when to move the elbow. Three, two, one, back on, back onto the surface swim, please. Back onto the surface swim. Okay, that's over 15 minutes, over 15 minutes. We're coming close to halfway, well done. Keep the hands up to each other. Pivot with the elbow, pop the elbow out wide. A lot of textbooks and coaches talk about a, a high elbow. I mean, yes, high in terms of the relationship to the hand. High elbow in what? In terms of keeping up near the surface? I don't see anybody swimming fast that way. So think about a wide elbow as you pivot out to keep it central. Keep the hand central, but the elbow goes wide and that gives you a nice strong pulling position. If you were at the end of the pool and you were pulling yourself up, so that that elbow out position, that'd be nice and strong, and that's what the body would want. Last three, two, one, tremendous. Back onto the cords, back onto the cords. Oh, where have we gone now? This is four minutes, this is four minutes. This is gonna take us through to 20 minutes. Then things might change a little bit. Four minutes with the cords. Take a step back away from your point of where the cords are tethered, tied off, if you can. If you're starting to lose your technique, come forwards a little bit. Work on your rotation. Keep the head nice and still. Throw in some breathing, by all means. Work on that pattern, two, three, four to one side. Again, you don't have to Breathe bilaterally on race day. I think that's where it all needs a little bit of clarification. Um, train with a mixed breathing pattern, which doesn't have to be every third. Racing, you want all the benefits that that mixed breathing pattern brought you in training, all of the symmetry, all of that slight breath holding if you were breathing sort of every three compared to every two. It's a few strokes less, or, or sorry, it's a few gulps of air less per length 
So there is a, a fitness and a volume change. But on race day, I'll probably want to stick to one side. Maybe the waves are rolling in. Maybe the sun's shining in the eyes. Maybe, um, you know, someone's swimming next to me and being a little bit irritating. I want to breathe away from them. So practice your bilateral breathing in training. Mix it up so that you can gain all the benefits on race day, even though you are breathing to one side. And if you see a single-sided breather in training or in the pool at any point, you'll see there's a relationship. They breathe and they lean. And I guarantee on the arm that pushes down to help stabilize the breathing, there's no forward momentum. It bounces you up, puts you in position to get to the air, but it really helps you go forward. We often lose that arm stroke. You know, It's probably 50% effective, if that. The hard thing is to keep that catch position, even though you are turning to breathe, if you can master that, imagine every breathing cycle, every breathing stroke, suddenly is propulsive rather than stabilizing. That's got to be a good thing to help you forward. Again, given you're breathing every two, on a 90 minute Ironman, 4,000 strokes, 2,000 breaths, I don't, I'm just guessing at some numbers, but you can imagine that's an awful lot of strokes that were not effective. Good work, everyone. Last minute, one minute to go. Keep it going. Don't lose focus as I am. <laughs> Pivot wide, horizontal forearm. If, like me, you are in a vertical standing position with your cords. If you are horizontal, if you are bent at the hips, Try to get the hips involved a little bit. I know it's not as easy. That's why we talk about trying to mount the cords as high as you can, so you can literally just pull down on them. Get the hips involved. Get them switching from side to side. Get the shoulders reaching. Finish the stroke in. Narrow your stroke down. Get the profile narrow. Get the, the amount of surface area narrow. Finish your stroke, and then you set your catch and each stroke finishes, come tight into the chin, tight into the chin. Last five, four, three, two, one, tremendous. Back onto the backstroke, back onto the backstroke. Here we go, here we go. Nice and slow, look for the accuracy. The shoulders are probably starting to feel it a little bit now. Try not to let this become a sloppy swim down. You still want accuracy. You want rotation. We want to fatigue the arms, take that fatigue into the full stroke in a moment. 35 seconds to go, 35 seconds to go. Good work. Stay narrow. As that shoulder drops down, the upper arm comes past the ear. The hands can only be at 180 to each other on backstroke. Any other variations and you will not swim as slow as you could. The hands must be at 180 to each other. And if you can pivot at the elbow at that point, Use the forearm to send the water down from the side. It kind of looks like, you know, little finger enters here, pivot, turn the palm, and then all of that comes down towards the hip. In three, two, one, tremendous. Back onto the cords, back onto, oh, sorry, slow front crawl, slow front crawl. Here we go, here we go, slow front crawl. Elbows high if you are. A high elbow swimmer, stay narrow. By now we're getting a bit fatigued. They might want to drop a little bit. Keep the elbows high, stay narrow. Elbow pivots wide. Hand is still pulling down the center line. I'm using everything in my power to keep me moving forwards, nice and straight. If I can swim straight, I don't need to sight as often. And then the person next to me that's sighting every three or four because their stroke is taking off, they're gonna get more tired. They're gonna swim a little bit further and they won't be able to swim as fast as me because even with a wetsuit on, lifting the head more often than you need to is gonna put pressure on the hips, sink the legs, and just slow the rhythm. Three, two, one, fantastic. Back on the cords, back on the cords. Here we go. All right, I promise, I promise. There is only one of these. There is only one of these. It is six minutes, six minutes. Oh my goodness. Don't worry, it will soon pass. It will soon pass. Six minutes. 
there is only one. That's going to take us up to 28 minutes, so you know, you know there can't be much more coming after this. Good work, everyone. So, we are really tired now. The shoulders are screaming. All you've got to do is just battle with your technique. Okay, talk to your chimp if that's what you've got. If you've read that book, your chimp's telling you to get back on the sofa, but you know you want to get better, you know want to, you want to get faster. So we're going to keep the pressure on, keep the accuracy. Don't shorten it, don't rush it, don't rip at it. That's not good. We don't want to lose our technique. If it helps, come in a fraction closer just to take the pressure off, just to bring the technique back. I might do that just so my left arm executes that catch a fraction earlier. I can see it fading, seeing it slip away. Remember the hips are rolling out of the way, so I can push all the way through. I'm reaching for the knees. I'm pulling down the backbone from head on. It's sort of this degree, slightly outside of 90, if you're looking for specifics. Okay, if you're inside of 90, it brings the hand a little bit too close to the body. Um, the water's a bit more disturbed, it's not ideal. And equally, you don't want it straight either, do you? So just a nice compromise. Outside of 90, just a little bit would be good. If you try to pull yourself out at the deep end of a swimming pool, look at the elbows, and the body will pretty much tell you where it wants to be. And I think those two movements, you know, they can, they can uh, complement each other nicely. Good work, everyone. So that's two minutes down. That's two minutes down. Four minutes to go. Four minutes to go. It's soon going. All right, add some breathing. Set your catch even though you're turning to the side. Set your catch even though you're turning to the side. It's one of the biggest things we could work on. If you can fix that as a problem in your technique during this dry land stuff, that would be an amazing return to full stroke swimming back in the pools, okay? So set the catch even though you're turning. Maybe if it helps, turn into the breath a little bit earlier. I try to time it so the hand is literally under the face and then I'm turning into it so I get a nice amount of clearance. The hand is well out of the way. And as the head is returning, the hand is not gonna sort of nudge that across and build momentum. So maybe if you can try to think about breathing a fraction earlier, get the head back into its neutral position a little bit earlier. Don't let it become a part of the arm recovery. Three minutes to go, three minutes to go. Head still, unless I'm turning to breathe, unless I'm sighting. Don't let the triceps pull up short now. Keep going down, reach for the knees. With the pressure from the cords, I do tend to keep this um, with a submerged movement. Don't worry about the surface. Obviously, you know, that with the weight, it's slightly different, but I don't want sort of an elasticated tension launching the arms back forwards. In fact, with the weight, with the surface recovery, it's a deliberate slow movement. So we just get the muscles activated. And I don't like the hands being pinged forwards over the top. It's a little bit, so just go with the, a submerged sort of sweeping backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And that's gonna work just fine. We do enough rotation work in between, and we will do a warm down with that drawing the sword movement. I don't know if you saw on social media earlier, um, but it's a nice way to bring the rotation back. Often we lose a little bit of rotation on the stretch cords and on the swim benches, especially if you are pivoted over, um, keeping the upper body horizontal as you pull your cords away from the wall towards you, you know, it's good to get the hips back involved. So we've got some a nice warm down exercise to try later. If you're standing, no problem, you're getting your rotation in. I'm finishing the stroke through, shoulder comes into the chin and I pull central. Good work, everyone. Last minute, last minute. Nearly there, nearly there. Coming up on 27 minutes, we're gonna be done on 32. We're gonna be done on 32. We've got a little swim down, cool down, and we'll be done. And that's stretch calls at lunchtime done nicely. Appreciate all of you that have migrated over to the lunchtime slot. The evenings are getting a little bit congested. 
what with food and bedtime and bath times for junior. So I really do appreciate that. Last 35 seconds, last 35 seconds. Don't let it fade now, don't let it fade. This is the long one. I know the triceps are screaming as you keep pushing down towards the knees, but just keep your best, keep your best. In 20 seconds, 20 seconds we're done, 20 seconds. Take a step back if you can, just to work them a fraction more. Good, good, good. In 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Tremendous, tremendous. Back on the dumbbells if you've got them. Try not to let this become a swim down, okay? We're still looking for accuracy. We're still working the technique. Don't let it come sloppy. We've still got one more round, but it's only gonna be small, and if you haven't done the maths yet, it's obvious. It's a minute of backstroke, a minute of slow surface front crawl, and then a final two minute burst on the cords before we swim down. Good work, everyone, good. Keep the upper body rotating, especially if you've got the horizontal cords and your rotation has been limited during the front crawl blocks, the longer blocks. Get your rotation in now. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, reverse it. Pivot at the hips a little bit if it helps work on your technique. Keep the elbow high if that's the way you're swimming it. Keep the elbow pivoting. So high elbow recovery, wide elbow pull. High elbow recovery, wide elbow pull. Keep the hand under the backbone. Keep the head still. Don't worry about the breathing. Or well, at least the head turning to the side to get the breath in. Last 30 seconds, my shoulders are absolutely screaming. I don't know about yours. Good work, everyone, good work. Get those elbows higher over the surface, Babbitt. Nice and high, don't forget your rotation. If you don't rotate on this movement, you will not get the height. You will keep the shoulders low, and then you'll almost be doing a single arm butterfly, and that will need some leg kick to stabilize you. Three, two, one. Good effort, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. We're done on those components. Last two minutes with the cords. Give it your all, give it your all. Best technique, and when I say give it your all, do not pull the ceiling down, do not rip tiles down. Give it your all, your best technique, even though the shoulders are screaming. Head still, throw in some breathing if you wish, if you can keep the elbow pivoting. Keep setting your catch even though the head is turning. If it's too much to take on board, just keep the head still. Keep switching the shoulders from side to side. Let the hips follow. Wonderful stuff. 75 seconds to go. 75 seconds to go. Fantastic. Don't let the stroke shorten. If the stroke shortens and you exit above the hip, you're going to impact your window of opportunity to get the air in. And that's going to then start demanding faster strokes to get the air in more quickly. They're going to get shorter. You're going to lose your propulsion. You're going to lose your streamline. Fight that desire, that fatigue with better technique rather than shorter strokes and more of them. Last 40 seconds, we're nearly there. Set the catch, early catch, wide elbow, wide elbow, wide elbow, pulling with the forearm. You forget the hands, focus on the forearm, make sure that's engaged, make sure that's facing the wall you're swimming away from. Last 20 seconds. In 15, keep switching. Fingers open a little bit if you've got the hands involved in five, four, three, two, one. Well done. Well done, everyone. Oh, good stuff. I'm just going to move these out of the way. 